Okay, so we're live on YouTube at least, maybe on Facebook too, we're not sure. We'll find out. Sorry, Facebook people. Um, I'm not copying them. Okay, so we're live. Um, start over again. Cut that first part. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I am Daniel Norton. Welcome to On Set. This is Dave on the Mighty Mixer. Yeah, so uh, we got Brian here helping us out today. Come forward and be judged. Um, and today, uh, we're, this is intro to Flash, right? Um, so this is the, so generally speaking, if anybody's watched any of these things that I've done, or been here before, I usually jump right in uh, with, with some base knowledge, assuming you have some kind of a, a base knowledge and stuff I explained a little bit. But today we're gonna get down to the kind of nitty gritty. I'm not a super technical person, strangely enough. Um, um, so it's not gonna be like all this science that you have to write make notes, but we're gonna talk about a Flash, why you might use Flash, how, why Flash, why I would make this statement, which I'll make right now. If you are a stills photographer, you will probably eventually want to use flash versus any other kind of light. And there's reasons for that. And we're gonna talk about that today. And I'm gonna kind of show the two basic uh, kinds of flashes, the speed light or small flash. Maybe, nope. Which one you going I don't know, this one. Okay. There we go. Ah, all right, let's try it again. <laughs> Um, and the larger or studio type flash right here. So either, either type of flash is going to have some of the same uh, you know, abilities or whatever, and the, there's reasons to use one over the other, uh, which have been talked about in many, many videos and many, many workshops, and I'll, I'll touch on them a little bit today. Um, but before we even get there, let's just talk about like lighting in general. So one of the things that um, has come about in the last years or whatever, right, is that uh, cameras have gotten better and better when you're shooting with them at high ISO, right? People know that, right? So it used to be, you know, for the old people, not like me, but the old people out there, they would have to shoot like lower ISO if they were shooting film or whatever, and people would need to light things. So basically what ended up happening is as people were able to start to shoot 800 ISO, 1200 ISO, 2000 ISO, and it looked good they started thinking to themselves, well, you know, I don't think I need lighting, right? Because what do you need lighting for? There's already enough light here. But the thing is, is that the reason why you want to use light is because you want to create your images, the images that you see in your head. Maybe if you're, if you're a street photographer and you're walking around shooting, or shooting landscapes, then obviously this is not for you, uh, this, this, this statement. But pretty much if you're making portraits, if you're making fashion, if you're making commercial uh, stuff, product photography, food photography, anything like that, you're going to want to take control of the light. It's not that you can't make a photo with no light, but you can make the exact same photo that I can make or that they can make or whatever, because the light is just there. Light is one of the tools that you will use to create your images. And one of the tools that is a little bit more difficult to master, maybe at first, but they can really help set your style. Using a 1.2 lens is not your style. I'm sorry, that's not, you can say that all you want, that's not your style, that's just shooting wide open. If anybody can do that, that's nothing, right? How you shape and use light can help be part of your style. So you want to start using light. So whenever somebody would come to me and say, hey, Daniel, because that's my name, right? So they said it to me, I want to get some lights. And then I would say, well, do you want constant light or do you want flash, right? And what do they say to me? What do you say to that? What's the difference, right? That's what every single person ever says. And then what do I say? Well, the constant light is on constantly and the flash flashes, right? And, I mean, that's basically the difference. So thanks for coming, guys. I uh, hope you will know more about flash now. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, that being a very basic and very simple way to explain it, that's literally the difference, the flash flashes. Now, what does that mean, right? Does your iPhone, if you have an iPhone, which, you know, chances are a lot of people here have iPhones, or Android or whatever other phones they have, has a flash on it, right? That does not flash. I'll say it again. That does not flash. That puts on a constant light for a very short amount of time, right? Same thing with most of, if not all of these LEDs that say that they flash. They don't flash. They put out a constant amount of light for a very short amount of time. The, the power of a flash is that it literally is Micro, super, super short, super, super, super short time that it's, that it's active. That is called your flash duration. And effectively, and we'll get deeper into this, but I'm just kind of throwing it out there at the beginning, little cliff notes. Your flash duration essentially becomes your shutter speed when none of the available light is affecting your shot. Okay, so I'll say it again. 
your flash duration effectively becomes your shutter speed, right? People understand what shutter speed is, right? When no other light's affecting my shot. So if I am in a room that's completely dark and I set a 30 second exposure on my camera and I open up the camera and I have a person standing there and I flash them and then we wait the rest of the 30 seconds, they will be completely frozen because the flash duration being hundredths of a second is going to freeze them, even though I had a 30 second exposure because none of the light in the space was affecting my shot, only the flash. That's the power of flash. But we're not usually standing in a room with no lights on, right? So flash needs to have power and we'll talk about that. But that's effectively why flash is uh, so, so powerful because your flash duration can be very, very, very short. This Profoto light at its maximum is like 20 thousandth of a second or something like that. So if you're dropping something like a, like you're doing a splash when you shoot a food photographer, or you're doing dancers and the hair is flying, that's a very, very, very short amount of time for the image to be frozen, which means you'll be more likely to actually stop the image, right? You may think, and a lot of people think this, that 250th or 500th or even a thousandth of a second is pretty fast when you're shooting somebody running down the street. It's not that fast. A thousandth of a second will not stop something that's really moving quickly, but a flash will, right? That is the power of flash. Does that make sense so far? Okay, cool. We'll eventually take pictures, I guess. This may be the longest I've ever gone without taking a picture. All right, here we go. Any questions so far? No. Okay, so to illustrate my point on some level, I have what is actually a very, very nice, they're not gonna let me keep it unfortunately, but a very, very nice constant light source here. And you're saying, Daniel, now this was a class about flash. Why is there a constant light source? Because you know, let's start here. This is a light panel, it's Gemini one by one that I wanna keep, but they're not gonna let me. Um, I'm gonna turn it on so don't look right at it. Okay, so this is an LED panel, right? This is a $1,000-ish, $1,500 LED panel. This is a professional. $2,500 LED, this is a nice LED panel. It's beautiful, actually. This is very nice, you look nice. Okay. I can control this. It's at 5,000 Kelvin, which is nice, right? That's a daylight-ish, right? I guess flash is closer to 6,000, so let's just... Let's look at this, I gotta go like this when I get close to it. I'm gonna put on 6,000 Kelvins. So your Kelvin, not the guy with Hobbes, that was Calvin, right? Is that, no? Calvin and up, no? Oh, wow, really, nobody? God. All right, okay, okay, okay. I wasn't gonna keep going if that wasn't there. All right, so your Kelvin temperature is basically your, your warmness, coolness. We talk about that in a lot of our lighting things, but basically flash is somewhere around 6,000. It's a little bit cooler than daylight. So I'm just making this equal to flash. So right now I'm, I'm lighting uh, uh, him up and I've got this, let's turn it up all the way. I'm glad that's what that did. I actually have never used this before, believe it or not. Um, it's pretty intuitive. I mean, I use the bigger one. All right, so this is a light meter. Right, <laughs> this is the Sekonic L308X-U. I'm going to put it on ambient. Now, you don't need to use a light meter, obviously, when you are using constant light because there's a light meter in your camera, right? Yes but I'm gonna use this because I have it. So I'm gonna set it at 250th of a second, 100 ISO, because that's what my camera's set at, and we'll do a reading. F 1.45, right? It's not a, lot, not a lot of light, right? Yeah, I mean, and this is a powerful light, right? And it's, it's a very nice light. If you're doing still photography and you're shooting a person moving or standing or whatever, and a lot of people, you want to be cool, right? I'm trying to be cool today, so I don't have a tripod. I'm like, I don't have a tripod. You know, I'm going to want to shoot with a relatively fast shutter speed. Let's say I want to shoot with 125 because I'm, I'm pretty steady. I haven't had too much coffee yet. I'm still only 2.05, right? So if, if uh, as noted at the beginning, you think your style is I use a fast lens, then I guess this is fine for you. And this is fine because if you think about it, this light is more uh, designed for, we'll say, the cinema industry, right? Where we're gonna be shooting at a 50th, 50th of a second, right? So now we're in closer to like 800 ISO, because those are some of the base ISOs of the cinema cameras, right? Now this light's powerful, right? But as a stills photographer, if I want to have the most, uh, you know, the lowest noise or whatever, I wanna have the, the best quality, 
because I'm lighting something, right? If I go into a, a place and I have to shoot, and I, I said earlier, you can shoot at 1600 ISO and it looks pretty good, right? But why would I ever do that when I can control my light, right? Why, why, why should I have to do that, right? Don't, don't I want to shoot at 100? Right, there we go. So not that this is bad, and it's actually very nice. In fact, we'll even make a picture, because I feel like it's time to make a picture. So I got my camera. This is a Canon uh, 1DX Mark II. Mark II, right? Uh, OK, what did I say? One point. I can't go that slow. So I'm going to have to go to a 60th to make a read. Uh, so that will be two, two, eight and a half. Because I've got this lens. This is the 24 to 70. This is the lens that everybody, this is the lens everybody has, right? Everybody has this lens. This is like the most common lens. Um, so I'm a 60th of a second, you know. And it probably looks pretty decent, right? He's looking good. Boom, boom, boom. And that's not terrible, right? It's a mug shot. But um, the light on him is nice and clean. It actually is, wow, that's kind of nice. You know? And consider it's a 60, that's relatively sharp, you know. What's that? Yeah, not terrible. It's fine. Did you say it's Canon sharp? Don't say that. They don't like, Canon does not like it when you say that. All right. So it's, it's not terrible. I, I didn't say that. I erased that part. All right. So. <laughs> Come forward a little bit. So obviously we can move them closer to the light um, to get it brighter, because that's one way to do it. I'm going to go to uh, four. Let's make a shot with a shed. There's not a shadow on the wall. Okay. Well, there'll be a shadow, but it's further back. There we go. All right. There we go. I moved the shadow for those people who want to ask that. So there we go. He's lit up, right? 60th of a second, F4. It's not terrible, right? This light is what I say it was, $2,500? $2,500. Pretty good, right? Looks nice, right? All right, this is the Canon 600EX RT2. No, 2RT. See, if you ever do the video, you got to say it the right way. You got to say the whole thing. This is RT2, RTD2. So this is basically a flash, right? This is the Canon flash. I can take this light, which is $600, $500-ish, right? And honestly, you could use any flash at this point. A um, couple of things here. I mean, I can go into what they call TTL, right? TTL is a metering system, which means that I don't have to meter the flash. It's going to work automatically, theoretically. Um, I can put it on top of my camera, and I can point it at my subject, right? And I can do this. Right? And he's lit up, right? Obviously, we're not going for a good shot with the proper you know, shadows and stuff. But we can see that this little tiny flash, while it's not as delicate and pretty the light, it has that much light. But hold on, there's more. Oh, it's got so much more than that, right? I can come here, and I can go to 250 of a second. Because when you're dealing with flash, your shutter speed has what's called, there's a shutter speed in your camera called a synchronization speed. As long as you are below, at or below that speed, you can shoot the flash and it's no problem. So I can go to 250 because that's the sync speed of this camera. Already, I can shoot at 250th without having to worry about it, right? On top of that, because F, nobody shoots at F4 these days, I'm going to go to 5.6. 250 to 5.6. Boy, that looks pretty much the same, right? Hey, right. why? Because TTL. Also, I, I turned this light on in between. Did you notice that? Didn't change anything, did it? Because this light is three stops, three stops less than my flash currently. This powerful light, which is a beautiful light, don't get me wrong, is not, is not, it's not a match for this thing. This is, this is a powerhouse. This is, this is the way that you control your space. I can take this flash, right? Yeah, I'll go even more. I can go, let's say, let's go to F8. I think we can get to F8 in this. Now I'm pushing it, right? We don't know. We're not sure if we can get F8 out of this. We'll try it. Yeah, okay, F8, right? Huh? F11? Now I'm pushing it, right? Now you're like, no way. F11, really? F11, right? No problem, right? F11, 250th, 100 ISO. That's with no flash, right? So this 
did this. And this happens to be Canon's, you know, top of the line flash. I do recommend that you try to stay in brand if you have the budget for it. If you got, we usually have them laying around here, we don't have one. If you got an inexpensive off-brand flash and it was the same guide number, which is how they rate flashes, which you can find them, you could do the same thing. What you get with the Canon flash or using any kind of branded flash is you're gonna get more consistent light, it's gonna last longer, it's gonna be a bit higher trade-in value. So there's reasons to do it, but if your budget was 100 bucks, you could find a flash like this that could do that, right? That's the power of flash. And not only can I do that, let's go back here, I'm gonna turn this off for a second. Let's go down to F4 again at a 60th, right? That was our rating for the other thing, right? And I'm gonna have you go like this. Yeah, just like that. It's like you're flicking me off, but not with your finger. Yeah, there you go, right? Oh, I was a little slow there. But we can see, well, let me do it again. No, you can go first. There you go. Right, well, I keep getting in the same spot. We can see his hand is blurry, right? Because he's, he's moving, motion blur, right? If we use a flash, And honestly, because 60th, right? Let's see, I'll go 60th at F11. I'll leave it at a 60 because it's changing my shutter speed, might be cheating. Right? Flash freezes, right? It's out of focus, clearly, but it's frozen, right? If I kill this light altogether, so I'm only getting flash, right? Even tighter, right? Probably try to focus on your hand, but you get the idea. All right, so flash will stop the action, right? Flash duration. That makes sense so far? Easy, right? So, okay, that's cool, right? We have a flash. It works. It gives you control. Question so far? No, okay, I'm making it really clear. That's good. Or I'm making it so confusing you have no idea what's going on. All right, which is also fine. Oh, hey, Seth. Seth Miranda. Woo. All right, so um, because we don't want to keep taking terrible pictures, uh, we're going to switch to a bigger flash. Not that you can't take nice pictures with a small flash, but I don't have a bunch of stuff for it. So I'm going to switch to my Pro Photo um, because for that, we've got a couple of things going on, right? This, not only is it bigger, so it's just like cooler to use and has a handle so you can like lean, right? I mean, that's part of it. This is also battery powered, by the way. Um, power, right? This is a powerful unit. It's back on channel seven again. When I'm out here, they put it on channel seven. It would be easy enough for me to change my controller to be seven, but I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, you're on three, right? Yeah, I am three. So I'm gonna, this has a bunch of channels in it. Don't worry about that. All right, so. This has a couple of things going on that, uh, that'll be beneficial to us. Number one, yeah, perfect. Number one, it has what's called a modeling light. Okay, modeling light. Yep, is gonna allow us to aim the flash and see what it's gonna look like, more or less, right? Also, it's much more powerful, as noted, and it, there's a lot of, you know, good accessories for it. So we're gonna basically put this on and we're gonna start talking about flash now. This is a three foot, three foot octagon. Now, I'll say this, if you're a filmmaker or you do, you know, multiple different things, You're not gonna light your movie with this, right? So flash is for stills. So keep that in mind. If you do multiple things, you're gonna wanna either have multiple sets of lights or deal with some of the uh, these drawbacks, we'll call them, of using constant sources, which if you, I've done things about shooting with constant, so you certainly can do it. Um, I make no judgments. All right, so here we go. This is lit up, we're ready to go. Okay, because I have TTL, in this, I can also set my 
TTL being through the lens metering. Um, I can set my camera. Now, when I'm using a big flash, let's start like we really want to use flash now, because we kind of went back, we did the basics, right? We have a flash, right? We know, at this point anyways, that we want to be in control of our situation. That's why we have a flash. That's the point of it, right? I've got my three-foot box because everybody knows that cool people use three-foot octagons. You put that on there, you're like, boom, done. You know, this is like, you don't even have to point it at them. It actually just works wherever you put it. No, you should put it. Um, I want to eliminate the light in the space, right? So I'm going to take advantage of the fact that my flash is very powerful, right? I'm going to set my ISO at 100, right? Why 100? It's the lowest ISO within the normal range, right? This is going to give me the least amount of noise, okay? I'm going to set my shutter speed at 250, 250 because that's the fastest speed in which my flash synchronizes with my camera. Those two things will help me eliminate light in the space, right? If, you're, if, you, if you were to take your camera with no flash and sit, make those two settings, if you went somewhere dark, you'd have to really open the lens up or whatever. So you know that, right? You know that that's not exactly, when you're standing inside like this, you wouldn't be shooting at that, right? You're going to get rid of the light. Now, your, your aperture is going to be set based on, in this case, based on just, it has to be closed down enough to eliminate the light in the space. After that, you can you do whatever you want creatively with aperture. I know, I know it's 2.8 lens. I know it costs you a lot of money and you want to shoot a 2.8. We'll do high speed sync in a second and you'll be able to do it. You'll be able to, oh God. Um, but before we do that, we're gonna say, let's get rid of the light in the space. So we already know, because we did a little test earlier, right? I think five seconds should do it, right? So 5.6 at 250, 100 ISO. All right, I'm in TTL. So what TTL does, called through the lens metering, you can come forward a little bit. Um, what happens is your camera has a meter in it, right? We already discussed that. It's a, uh, it's a generally a reflected meter. It's used for, the one that you see anyways, is used for the ambient light, right? But there's also a metering system in your camera that deals with flash, because most camera systems have something like this, right? So there's a metering system that operates this. That operates on what's called through the lens metering. What happens is your flash sends out what's called a pre-flash. You don't see it because it's a pre-flash. It's before the flash, right? So the pre-flash goes off. It's, it hits your target, it's like a little baby assistant runs out there and meters it for you, runs back, gives the camera the information, the camera then sets the flash at the right power, right? It's basically doing it every single time you take a frame. That's important because it, it, what that does lead to is the ability to walk around with your flash and take a bunch of different pictures, it will always be right, right? It's just the idea of right like that. Um, but it might not be consistent because your meter, depending on how you're framing shot up, your shot up, is seeing different parts of the thing, right? They might see a lot of background, they might see a black shirt, they might see a white shirt, they might see more skin. So TTL does have kind of the drawback that it tends to not be 100% consistent. That doesn't mean it's not always good, but if you're shooting, let's say, a fashion catalog and you shoot 50 pictures, you want them all to be the same. Even if they're all the same and wrong, you want them to all be the same because then it's easier to fix it or adjust it or do whatever. If, if, if they're tenths of a stop off, you have to go back in and do extra work. So oftentimes you're not going to want to use your TTL system if you're doing something that's going to stay the same, like a portrait or fashion or something like that, or once things are set up. Um, in, well, at least in the Profoto system, there may be other ones now that do it as well. Um, you can use TTL to establish your shot and then switch to manual and it leaves things locked in, meaning that it'll stay where it's at until you change it. Small flashes like this do not do that. So if you know that you're not going to want to use TTL the whole time, you're going to want to set your flash manually. So keep that in mind. Um, okay, so does that make sense? Yeah, that's always the, the thing. You get the whole thing set up TTL, and then you're like, oh, I want to go manual. You really can't with those. You've got to like, uh, think about that. Okay, but with the Pro 40, you can. So let's start here. I'm in TTL. I'm going to frame up a shot. We'll go horizontal today. Why not? That's what the cool kids are doing. Okay, good, good, good. All right, so he's lit up. This is what TTL thinks is the correct exposure. It's not wrong or bad, right? You may look at it. That's much sharper, right? Um, and think this is a little bit bright. If you do, or maybe you think it's dark, but it's definitely not dark. If you think it's too bright, you can actually tell TTL, hey, man, that's a little bit too bright. And then TTL will be like, I think so, really? I'll be like, yeah, you know, a little bit, okay. So 
we want to use what's called flash exposure compensation. So if you've ever used your camera in like P mode, you know, professional um, or aperture priority, and you put shot somebody near a window and behind them, right? You've had to make an exposure compensation adjustment so that you guys do that, you don't even bother. You just like forget it. I don't care. I walk away from the window. So what you're going to do is you're going to tell the TTL, hey, do what you think is right, but you know what? Just bring it back a little bit, right? So I'm going to go into my camera and I'm going to set my flash exposure compensation, not my regular exposure compensation. And I'm going to turn it down a smidge. Well, I'm going to turn it down a full stop just so you see the difference. And I'm going to come back in and be like, hey, man, how's this? Right? And it's going to make it darker, right? Because I told TTL, hey, that was too bright. I'd rather it be a stop darker. Obviously, this is way too stop dark, but I wanted to make a, a big example. You can do it in most cameras in like thirds of a stop. This is great if you, again, want it to adjust every frame, but you need the compensation. Like, let's say I'm shooting in a space where there's a lot of backlight or whatever, and I need to make sure that's there. In a studio setting, I would not do this. Instead, I would put it back in zero, take a shot. OK, we're back here. Now I think it's a little bit too bright. Again, with what I said before, I can now put the flash into manual. So my flash is now in manual. And I can say, all right, I'm going to turn it down a little bit. I'll turn it down 3 tenths of a stop. Actually, I'll, start it down one, I'll turn it down a full stop just to match the other one, just to show you guys. Right? Now I can turn it down a full stop. The advantage here now, though, is that if I was to frame it up completely different, it would stay the same because I'm in manual. So I'm actually going to go back because that was too much. We'll get a better exposure. Boom. OK, there he is. He's looking good. He's got the space over here for type. He looks nice and sharp. Is that sharp? It's Canon sharp. Right? See the difference between that and a 60th, right? Where I, before, I was like, that's sharp, right? You guys were like, oh, it's not bad. No, no, this is sharp, right? That's a flash, right? It's also 5.6 versus f4, which is guess, not the big of a difference. Make sense so far? Yeah? Easy? I'm wondering online if um, TTL is, or how TTL uh, reacts to different modifiers. OK, so how does TTL react to different modifiers? In theory, it shouldn't, right? Because it's not reading from the light. It's reading the light that's hitting your subject. So it will vary. Depending on what they're wearing, depending on the, you know, the reflectivity of it. Like one of the things that, that uh, throws it off a lot is if the light's behind the person. Like when we do multiple setup shots and I put one light back here, this light is probably not going to do well in TTL because it's pointing at the camera, right? So we're pointing at the camera. It's not designed for that. TTL was originally designed for the flash to be on top of the camera. So it always works best this way. You start doing weird stuff, it's going to throw you off. That doesn't mean it's not useful. It just means that you have to be aware of that when you start working with it, right? It's just a way to work. That makes sense? Cool. Easy. I'm flying. No questions? You guys are making it too easy. Yes? Sorry, when you use uh -oh. multiple flashes, I know this is uh -oh. a bit, you know, different than using just one. Mm -hmm. Does the TTL work the same way? Like, do, do they all talk to each other and say, OK, we're mm -hmm. exposing for the same 18% gray? You know? Like, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. So the question is, if you're using multiple flashes, does it work the same? Are they all going for the Well, what happens is this. The, the camera, right, the, the camera is doing all the math, right? And it knows which flashes are putting out what power. So it will know that the flashback there is, is, is throwing out too much light or, or not enough light, and it will correct for you. They're all trying to make the same exposure. Uh, they're not really, the flashes aren't talking to each other, but they're all talking to the camera, right? The camera's the computer, so it's kind of in the middle, right? So in theory, Right? Everything's theoretical until you do it. Right? Uh, it um, you can have as many flashes as you want, and they will all try to give you the best exposure that they think is correct, that the camera thinks is correct. Is it always right? No. Right? This is the, 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 the thing. Right? Anytime you're using a meter in the camera or anywhere, you've got to use your judgment. Yes, sir? I want to add to that. The, uh, well, the FEC, which is the flash exposure company. How, how, how would it vary all the three flashes at the same time? Okay, if you use the flash exposure compensation in your camera and you have multiple flashes set up, they will all go down the same amount. Yes, well, relatively. They'll go the same percent, right? Because remember that, so the difference between manual and TTL is this. If my flash is on five and I turn it down one stop, right, it goes to four. If I'm in TTL and I turn it down one stop, it goes down the correct exposure, minus one. 
right? Do you see the difference? There's a difference. It's ratio. It doesn't have anything to do with the exact power number. The exact power number doesn't matter really in TTL. All that matters is the ratios, and that's what you're controlling. Yeah, but it will bring them all down the same. So sometimes you have to, you know, you can do complex flash things, but this is intro to flash, where like you ramp up the exposure, flash exposure compensation, then turn certain flashes down separately to kind of get mixes. There's lots of different ways to use it. You can also use your regular exposure compensation as well. But I don't, regular exposure compensation does nothing when you're in manual, which is where I am. But if I was in aperture priority, for instance, you could use your regular exposure compensation to like underexpose, then use flash exposure compensation to overexpose. So you can do all these weird things that maybe is another class, because that might be too, although we are going fast, so maybe we can do weird stuff. Um, okay, other questions now? No? Huh, all right. Yeah. yeah. Shoot. On my camera, I have a flash compensation setting that yep. gives me a plus or minus three. Is yep. that in stops? Is that in something else? What is that? OK, so you have inside your camera a flash exposure compensation, and it gives you minus or plus, one, right. two, and three. Right. That stops, yeah. That's it? That is stops? Yeah, 100%. Yep. That's how it's done. That's a good question. It was like, well, I don't know what that means, but yeah, there, sure enough. Um, other questions? Yes, go. I'm not sure if this no, go for it. This is, this is the class for the, the stupid questions, because if you ask me next week, I'm going to get mad. <laughs> uh, my question is, as far as the, um, the, the, um, yep, yep. the aperture study, mm -hmm. you said 4, F4 or 5.6. Right. Now, I've noticed. Aperture, yep. Yeah, depend, depending upon, right, because obviously yep. you're going to be opening more the aperture. Obviously, you got to bring down the, uh, the exposure, the flash. you got to adjust for that. No. When you're using TTL, TTL if you change the aperture. I'm going, I'm going back to manual. Yes, yeah, so if you're using the flash in manual, then you would have to adjust. Yep, exactly. In fact, one way to think about it, because we'll start mixing flash in a second. We're going to mix the flash with the constant in a second, is that your flash is going to be controlled by your aperture, right? You're going to turn your flash up and down, and you're going to, any adjustments that you make to your aperture or your ISO, you'll have to adjust the flash as well. If you adjust your shutter speed, you will not have to adjust the flash. That's basically the difference. If you're, if you're in a scene and there's also available light, your shutter speed becomes much more relevant, which we'll talk about in a second. Let's just use high-speed sync first, though, because I know you guys want to. All right. OK, so I'm going to go back to TTL. I'm going to switch to something called high-speed sync. So what high-speed sync does, this is the point of the demo that Daniel hopes that they upgraded the firmware on the light in the store because uh, <laughs> he hasn't used it yet. Um, it allows you to set your shutter speed to faster than the normal sync speed. And the way that it works is, more or less, there's different ones that do it different ways, but the way the Profoto one works is it pulses the light. You don't see it because it happens really quickly. Because, OK, so I'm not going to explain this in super good detail. Mark Wallace has a great video with like diagrams and stuff. But basically, when, you've got, when, you're, when you take a picture, there's a curtain that goes up. right? And, and basically, if you were to, actually, I'm just going to do it. I'm not going to go in high speed sync. I'm gonna, actually, the camera won't let me do it. The modern cameras are too smart. Yeah, it won't let me. You can't actually do this anymore because the camera won't let me. But if I was to set the camera, let's say, at 500th of a second, or 1250 like I am right now, and I was in, uh, not in high speed sync, what would happen is half my frame would have a black line through it. It'd be gone because the flash is not in synchronization with the shutter of the camera. So watch the Mark Wallace video, not right now, obviously, because um, it's very good. Um, I can't make it do it. I don't know if there's a way to over to override. To override. <laughs> like literally, like you can see, right? I'm at 12, see what I'm? Well, it went to 250 because yeah. it's too smart. Damn, cameras are too smart. Anyways, I can't do it. So you'll have to trust me on that. But if I go to high speed sync, uh, it'll allow me to shoot faster. So I'll go 1250. I'll stay at 5.6. Let's see what we got. Hopefully, now, because it's pulsing the flash, it's using a tremendous amount of power. So don't think for one second that you can just put your flash in high speed sync and be like, why don't I just always put it there? Because it's going to use a ton of power. It's going to push it up, which means you cannot shoot. Like I can't shoot at f22 and be in high speed sync. It won't work. It won't have enough power in the flash because of the way it uses it. But a 5.6, I should be able to get. Find out in a second, I guess. Yeah, there we go. So that, you see how, see how much like, sexier you look too? It's like, whoa, 1250 of a second. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Leans into it. They like that. Yeah, people like high speed sync. All right, so that's 1250 of a second. This one here is boom, 250. It is a smidge darker. High speed sync is kind of one of those things that you might have to do some tweaking with, just like anything in TTL. 
but we can see what we're going to get from that. Now, right now, that means nothing to you because it's like, okay, so you did 12.50 a second. Who cares, right? Yeah, who cares? Like, why are you even doing that? You know why I'm doing it? Because now, remember that in the room, right, at 2.50 at 5.6, it was, it was dark. But if I open up my aperture two stops to 2.8 because I spent a lot of money on this lens, now I might get some of the room light in the shot. So I can compensate the other way by adding two stops on the back end. So now I can go 1,000th of a second at 2.8. You'd be like, you know, I have a 2.8 lens and I'm professional. And there you go, right? 2.8. So now we have out of focus ears because people love when the ears are out of focus. They're like, oh man, could you make my ears out of focus? It'd be so cool and beautiful. The bokeh. But still sharp on the eyes, right? Thousandth of a second, 2.8. I'm shooting at 2.8. I spent a lot of money. I'm like, yeah, look at this, 2.8, right? Done. That's what it's for. If I'm standing in the studio, I mean, maybe you like this look. I'm joking, of course. If you like it, all the more power to you, right? But typically, I like my whole person's head to be in focus when possible. So I'm never going to shoot like this in the studio. I don't care if the background's in focus. Why would I want to use high speed sync really in like life? Is because if I'm outside and it's tremendously bright, right? Because I might not want to shoot at f22 in the street. I might want to shoot at like 5.6, right? And if I do that, I'm going to need to use high speed sync, and that's what it really is for in my mind. But again, you can do this kind of stuff here. I'll, I'll, you like this out of focus. He likes this, right? Yeah, he's like, I want the shot. So I'm, gonna, I'm also going to go to 70. I know it's crazy. I was at 50 before. I'm going to 70 for you, just for you, man. There we go. Okay, there we go. Now we get that shot, right? He's out of focus, he's got a longer lens, he feels all like cool, and we're good to go, right? High speed sync, that's what it's for. Okay, make sense? Boy, I did that really easy. I never do high speed sync, you guys should be excited that I did it. All right, good. Let's move on. What was I, what did I say I was gonna do? I forgot what I said. Mix. Oh, I was gonna mix it, yes, you're right. Okay, so, we have this, we have two lights, right? We have this light. Hmm. How long is this cord? All right. All right, I got this light here, and this happens to be, as noted, I get five cents every time I mention the name of this light, so just get ready for it. This is the light panels, uh, Gemini one by one, soft, I thought. Um, oh man, this is upside down. Can you fix this? Yeah, we can't work like this. Yeah, they put that on, <laughs> the, the text, Okay, so I'm gonna turn this, don't look right at it, because it's bright, boom, I'm gonna turn it on, right? He's like, it's not bright, I've been watching your class. <laughs> I mean, it's relatively bright. All right, so I'm, having never used this before, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna hit this button. I'm gonna hit this. Nope, nope, oh, there we go. CC, I'm gonna go, what CC, is that the, is color modes is the, uh, which one has the gels? Color modes. Uh, color modes, okay, so, boom, I'm gonna go gel mode. All right, I am using gel number L71, Tokyo Blue, right? Wasn't that a movie? They had cars and they, Tokyo Drift. Okay, good, that was close. All right, I got my blue gel, right? It would not be an onset live if there wasn't a blue gel somewhere. So now I got my blue gel, everything's kind of cool. I'm like, yeah, you know, I haven't put anything on Instagram in a while. I need this, what does that do? Let me press random buttons. Oh, I can change it from tungsten to daylight. I must say daylight. Okay. Uh, I'll leave it full power. Why not? Okay, so now we're here, right? We've got a blue gel on one side of them. We've got the flash on the other. We're at 1,000th of, 1, of a second at 2.8. 100 ISO. All right, I can't shoot at 70 anymore. It's painful. I'm going to go 50. Good. All right, we've got a little blue in there, right? Now, we can control how much blue, how? Lower the flash? I can do it with my shutter speed, right? Because if I, if I use my, my, what I'm gonna do though, number one, is I'm going to turn off the modeling light over here, which I can do with the remote, but I didn't feel like it. Um, the reason why I'm gonna do that is because I don't, I'm gonna start messing with the ambient light, so I wanna get rid of as much of it as possible. Can we also, excuse me, kill that bad, bad boy? The one above? Yeah, the one above. It's one of them. Yeah. All right, so let's, first of all, let's get a base, nope, that's not it. Ah, there we go. All right, so let's, we'll get a baseline, right? So let's do a baseline. 
Okay, that's now the two lights. Actually, they didn't change very much. Eh, a little bit. All right. That's pretty good. If we want more blue, we can uh, we can go. I mean, there's lots of different ways to do it. Yeah, if you don't mind, we can go slower shutter speed. Now remember, it's filling in our shadows. So if we are, were to, if we go too slow, what's going to happen is our shadows are going to start to go, disappear and become blue. Well, I shouldn't say too slow, but you know, the slower we go, you see, I was getting blue over there. It's going to be blue wherever our shadows are. Now this is a pretty wide spread, so it's also hitting our highlights a little bit. Yeah, perfect. That was very good. Do that. Turn that way with your face. No, just that much. There we go. So what I'm doing right now is, if I'm going to play with this kind of stuff, which I am, I'm going to turn off my flash. I know it's crazy. Because I want to see where my blue is. Right? Where's my blue at? There it is. Okay. That's my blue, right? Now, that's pretty neat. You don't need flash. This is great, actually. All right, so we'll turn the flash on. And again, I'm in TTL high speed sync. So it's neat, right? But it did kill the blue little. Why? Oh, it's too powerful. The key light is too powerful. Too powerful? The reason why it's killing the blue is because the flash is hitting where we want the blue. So if you're going to do this, you got to control where your flash falls. So we got to just go like this. Boom, 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 boom. I know it's crazy. I'll put the flash back there. That should probably work. We've done this before, I swear. Yeah, turn towards the flash. There you go. All right, now I'm separating my lights. I know it's, I said I was going to go horizontal, guys, but I think I'm going to have to go vertical for this just for the coolness factor, right? Now we've separated our sources, right? Make sense? Using high -speed sync. I am using high-speed sync just because I'm cool, but I can, I can turn it down a little bit. So we got a couple of things going on here. By the way, this camera has a little light on top, which is nice if you're in the dark. A um, couple of things. Number one, I'm looking at this and I'm like, ah, that's pretty good. But because I put the light behind him, what happened? As noted with TTL, it got a little bit tricky. It's a little bit hot, right? It's a little bit hot. It's still got detail there, though, but right there, it's a tiny bit hot for me. So I'm going to use my flash exposure compensation, and I'm going to turn it down. I'll stop. Uh, Daniel, would it be wise to go manual in this, in this particular? Um, nah. Would it be wise to go manual? Nah. We never like to go manual. That's, yeah. Manual is for people that can't afford this flash. Yeah, no. All right. OK, so yeah, I mean, we could, but I'm just messing around with that thing right now. Since I don't really know my exposure, there we go. So now we, we, we go minus 1. I'm going to go minus 2. Actually, I think. Oh, no, you can. OK. Yeah, Seth is happy I made the background blue. Yeah, well, it would not be an onset if we didn't make at least the one background blue. All right. All right, I went manual for you, just for you. There you go. And I could dial it in more and more, right? I could go, boop, uh, let's see, manual, so let's drop it stop. Let's drop it two stops, because I'm crazy like that. Right? There we go. Now we're in manual. This is like perfect Instagram food right here. You're like, oh my god, I got so many looks, likes. Likes? Likes? Understand? Is that what they're called? All right. Do one more shot that's actually in focus. That's usually, it's not a high priority, but you know, sometimes. Okay. I'm actually going to focus. Hmm. You know what I'm going to do? Just for you. There we go. All right. Now we get the blue. We're mixing them together. We can control them, right? Based on, yes. You can turn the lights back on, Dave. What is that? I see this beast looking at me. I'm sorry, yes. <laughs> yeah, you're asking me if I'm doing it to make the... Yeah, I mean, okay, so why am I using... No. 
So, yeah, the question was just how to mix the lights together. I happen to have the ability to make this blue, which is much more interesting than just filling it in. So that, that's why I did it that way. But yeah, of course, I mean, uh, I'm doing it on purpose. <laughs> I mean, he's like, did you do that on purpose? Or was that like, what are you doing over here? I guess essentially I wanted to know that. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it so happens that, yes, when given the Gemini one by one soft, <laughs> you might as well make a blue light because, you know, why not? Right? Well, you got blue light, why not use it? But I could do it not blue if you want. I mean, you know. Let's see. If I can remember how to do it again, you go like that, right? Boop. Boop. There we go. It's a bit brighter now. I'm just going to dial it down. Do, 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 do. I'm just eyeballing it. OK, I could also just adjust my shutter speed, obviously. Actually, that's what I probably should have done, since this is a flash thing. Let me put it back up. So now in this case, this is brighter, right? So let's come in and do, and do a shot. Right, We're in manual, right? So let's just see what happens. You can look the same way you just did. So I know, just by looking at it, that this is going to be way too bright. Ah, it's not too bad. It's a bit bright, though. It's definitely brighter, right? So I can adjust that now with my shutter speed. I'll go to back to 1,000. Look this way. Right? And now I'm getting like a more moody shot that's kind of closer to that in vibe. But I mean, what's cooler, right? What's going to get you more likes on Instagram? Come on now. You know the blue is going to work. But... So yes? I recently did like a short headshot, a headshot shoot. OK. Mm -hmm. uh, yep, so strobe in front, continuous light to the side, yeah. Right, so would you say it's a little bit better or you would have better results? Or is no. It is it better? Bad? No. Why did I do this? Why did I set it up like this, guys? Who was paying attention? The reason why is because we weren't getting enough blue saturation. Because they were, they, there's just the lights in the beginning from the front. Oop. I should actually press the button correctly and you'll see. So in the beginning, right, I was getting much less blue. People were like, well, oh, we want blue saturation. So then I was like, well, let me show how I do it, right? Because when you mix the lights together, they, they bleed into each other when you use gels, right? So if you want your gel to be the strongest, you got to have no light that's, that's neutral hitting it. So that's the reason why. If you're doing a clean shot, no, you don't need to do that at all, right? We could do that just like this, right? I'm back, back to uh, neutral light. Right? Oh, there we go. So we're neutral. So now I move the light back to the front. Because I can do that because I'm good like that. Not even using the Brooklyn reflector yet. That's only there because I get paid when they're uh, the set gives me a kickback. All right, so we got the light back in the front. We're more traditional, right? I'm going to go to, oh my God, how fast am I going? 25 hundredth of a second. Why? Because I can. Let me put it back in TTL. Right? 25 hundredth of a second, right? Oh, I have flash exposure compensation on, two, minus two stops, so let me put that back. Okay. Here we go. 25 hundredth of a second, right? Okay, let's turn this off for a second. One more, just like that. Right? OK, so 25 hundredth of a second, right? So here we're getting a bit of fill in from the, from the natural to neutral light, right? And then here we're not because I turned it off. I could eliminate it. I mean, at this point, it's very close. I don't know. Should we try it? We're going to go for it. This light is really close, right? And I'm like, you know what? I could just walk up and turn it off like that. I could dim it. All that requires way too much work. I'm a modern photographer, I'm kind of lazy. I'm just going to get rid of it with power if I can. So I'm going to go 8,000th of a second. I'm going to try anyways with my shutter speed. Let's see if that works. I don't know if I can get 8,000th of a second out of this. We'll see. Oh, yeah, yeah, not bad. Will adjust for it though, right? Oh, indeed, it just did. Yeah. What does that say? 8,000th of a second at 2.8. Why? Because this lens is expensive. That's right. Expensive lens, TTL, you're done, right? Did it get rid of all of it? I don't think it did, though, actually. Let's see. Nah, not all of it. All right, well, 8,000 is as fast as this camera can go. It's not a Minolta or anything. Minolta, right? 
Minolta. Which ones went to 10,000? Was that Minolta? Yeah. All right. This camera only goes to 8,000th of a second. Can somebody get me a new camera? Okay, so I think the Olympus is now going to like 15,000 or some crazy thing. Or the, the electronic ones. Oh, yeah, well, electronic shutter, but that's, that's a joke, though. All right, so 5.6, 8,000th of a second. Let's see if we can do it. No, can't do it. Sad. Let's try a four. Huh. All right, it's almost there. All right, so that's basically where we're at. F4, 8,000th of a second. I mean, that's not bad, right? Do you know how bright the sun is? What is it? What's, what's, your, what's your, uh, your, your F stop with the sun? <laughs> yeah, at F4, what's, what, what's your charger speed? Let's do some math, people. Right, so the sun is 16, right, at 125. So at eight, or I'm just going the other way. So it's, I'm going at four. So it's 125, 16. So at eight, it's 250, really? Really? 250? <laughs> 11,000, right? And I'm sorry, I'm going the wrong way. Uh, five, six, thousand. F4, 2,000. So this is brighter than the sun, essentially, my exposure right now. Right? That would make it dark outside. Not dark, but darkish. Okay, that's math. We don't get into that in this class. Questions, though. High speed sync, you follow me? I mean, I just basically did it just to kind of show off a little bit, because you know that's what you gotta do sometimes. But uh, really, what you're gonna wanna use it for is when you wanna shoot wide open or close to it, and it's too bright to normally do it with your normal sync speed. Otherwise, you should be in regular sync. Don't always shoot high speed sync. It's not the most consistent way to shoot. Oftentimes, the color temperature is not perfect between each, each shot. You want consistency when you're using flash. So keep it within the normal range when you can. Okay? Oh, you know what? Oh, but I have no idea how to make it work. This has high-speed sync as well. Let's see if I can figure it out. Watch me while I figure out a flash. There's a menu here. Who, has, who shoots Canon? Wow, really? Oh, geez, okay. Hold on, I think I did it. Sync. I didn't. Oh, there we go. High speed. No. Yeah. Yeah. High speed. That's what that means. Oh, that's second, first curtain. High speed. There we go. High speed sync. Bam. All right. That wasn't that difficult. I think I'm in high speed sync. Yes, I am. Let's go 1250th of a second. 2.8 because this lens is expensive. Boom. There you go. Right? Even our basic flash from the beginning can do the high-speed sync. It didn't do as good of a job with the flash, with the exposure, but hey, you know, what can you do? Questions about that? No? Nope. All right, easy. So another thing that you can do with flash, which, yeah, we can make, it, we can make this work. Why not? Most flashes have some kind of a cell inside of them that will allow them to fire if they see another flash going off. So if you want, obviously, we've been using radios. But we can use one flash to fire another one, right? So basically what we can do, let's say that we have, you know, uh, this Profoto flash here, and it's really nice, right? And we're like, yeah, we spent all our money. Um, there we go. Um, and you want to buy a second one, but you know, your allowance hasn't come in this week, you know, whatever, you have another shoot. So, but you wanna have some fill flash. We can use our Canon flash that we have in our bag always as our fill. We cannot use them both in TTL because these two TTL systems are not the same, right? If you had multiple Canon flashes, you had multiple Profoto flashes, you had whatever, they would work together. But because we don't have that, we're mixing them, we have to go manual, right? So before I do anything, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my Profoto flash and I'm going to meter it to where we want to shoot, right? So we want to shoot at two, at 5.6, we'll say. Let's say F8. F8's always a good place to be, right? So we're going to meter at F8. The way we do that is we're going to use the the, uh, the, the controller here, and I'm basically going to take my flash, and I'm gonna do a test shot with the meter. I 
Actually, I don't know why I got so close to you. When did that happen? All right. I'm going to use my, my uh, controller here to adjust my power. I'm going to meter towards the flash. I'm at F8 now, right? So in theory, if I just fire my flash, now I'm not in TTL right now, I'm in manual. I should get, should get a proper exposure at F8 at 250th. Okay, all right, that's a smidge dark. We'll give it to, uh, I'm in high speed sync, that's fine, hold on. Oh, oh, hold on, my computer says something. Attach camera, okay. My computer did not like that. It was like, what did you just do there? All right, so whenever you're shooting tethered, if this happens, just restart everything, and in theory, it'll work. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to restart capture one. I mean, I could just keep shooting, but then you guys wouldn't see anything, and that would be a little bit boring, I think. Okay, let's see if that helps. There it is. Okay, camera's back. I'm in manual. I'm in first curtain. I'm gonna take a shot. Nope, the camera disappeared again. What's going? What is going on? Huh? Stay. Uh -huh. Right. We're gonna try that again. All right, looks like we got a little cabling issue here, guys. Stand by. Huh. That's what happens when you make fun of your camera. You make fun of your camera, it just it gets pissed. It's like, oh, really? So slowly. There we go. All right, so now we're properly exposed. Everything looks good, but let's say, thank you, that we want some fill. We want that shadow filled in, and we only have this other flash here. I'm going to take my Canon flash, and I'm going to put it on top of the camera. I'm going to put it, I'm going to switch this to auto radio mode and put it into what they call slave mode, which means it will fire when it sees another flash. Yep. I don't know what you're talking about, sir. I just told you what it was called. I literally just said it. All right. All right, so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to move this to manual. And I'm gonna, now I can put my power setting in, right? So I'm in manual. I'm going to turn it down because I want it to be fill flash. I know, remember earlier, we were getting like F16 with this thing at full power. So we definitely don't want to do that. I'm going to turn this thing way down to 1 of power. I could meter it, but, you know, come on. We're halfway through the shoot. We're not going to worry about that. Okay, now I'm paranoid. Okay. And now we have some fill flash, right? See how I did that? Now, I do have some shadow on the background. So I got a couple of options there. One is to adjust my flash so it's in a different position. One's to turn it down because it's too much. Another one would be to move him, which we really can't do. We could bounce the flash, maybe? What do you think? Yeah, we can Brooklyn reflect it. So I could take the flash like this. Now, granted, if I'm going to bounce the flash, it's going to eat power. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch here. I'm going to give myself a little bit more juice. So I'm going to go to 1 8th power. Why 1 8th? I don't know. I'm just doing some math here. Don't worry about it. I'm going to bounce this. Right, and there we go, right? Fill flash, not the best composition because I got many things going on here, but we're basically bouncing it in. I mean, I could also, if I wanted to not be able to charge the client as much, because obviously the more flashes you use, the more you can charge. But I could also just use a reflector. The advantage of doing it the way I did it there is I have control, right? I can, I can balance it exactly where I want, 
But if you only had the one flash, just for the point of it, we'll come over here and we'll just use the reflector to reflect. And that's not bad either, right? Except it didn't come in. So you, don't, you will never know if it's bad or good. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. There we go. There we go. And that's not bad either, right? So here, the main difference here is that, I mean, besides one's vertical and the other's horizontal, is that um, by using the fill flash, we have a little more control. That's the most I can ever get. I mean, you might like that better, which is, actually does look a little nicer. But, but with the fill flash, I can actually control how much. I can make that shadow as deep or as filled in as I want. That's the advantage of it. Plus, I already have it, and I already, you know, it's like I already spent my money, because you're like, Daniel, you told me to buy a speed light when I first started. Now I have these pro photos, and what am I going to do with this? Well, you can put it on top of your camera and use it as a fill, right? It works. Questions? That makes sense? Did I do that part too fast? All right, cool. I think we're cranking. Are there no questions online? Huh, this is the quietest group ever. Yes? Right, in order for the flashes to work together, they need to be from the same system. Yeah, there are some systems, uh, TTL systems, that are um, cross unit, like uh, Skyport. Is, is uh, an open source unit now, uh, system now. It started with Ellen Chrome, but it's in a bunch of stuff now. So if you have something with Skyport in it, you could use it with uh, multiple things. Photix, I think, works with some of the Skyport triggers now. So, you, you know, generally speaking, though, yeah, if you're using these Canon flashes, you're going to be using only Canon flashes. If you're using Profoto system like I am, you're going to be using the Profoto flashes. You're not going to be using this Canon flash with that Profoto. It usually isn't the best way to do it. Um, it's, now, you could fire it but you wouldn't be able to control it in TTL. That's what I'm talking about there. You can get generic triggers like Pocket Wizards that will fire anything, but you won't get the TTL, you know, with the generic ones. Other questions? Does that make sense? Flash, understand why you might want to use Flash. Should I mention the light panel again so I can get more money? No. We, we had made the background blue. That seems like a fair. We did use the Brooklyn Reflect. I think we hit all the, the, the yes. You know, speed lights are generally rated in guide numbers. Uh, the guide, your, your power is your guide number divided by the distance. So, but most speed lights are somewhere around 75 watt seconds. It doesn't really matter. I, I know, I know. I know there's plenty of people online that are gonna tell you that it matters, but it doesn't, because I can tell you that it doesn't. It only matters within the same system. If you buy a 500 watt second pro photo light and a 1000 watt second pro photo light, the 1000 will likely be one stop brighter. If you buy a 500 watt pro photo light and a 500 watt something else light, they're probably not gonna be the same power. It's just, there's a whole bunch of other things to be factored in. There's efficiency, there's a lot of other factors. So this means nothing. Do test if, if that matters that much to you. I mean, for most people, a speed light is gonna be fine. When you find out that you don't have enough light, then you buy something that's brighter. That's basically your best way to do it. Don't worry about the actual numbers. It doesn't really, really matter um, for most people in most cases. And if it does matter, Rent it first. You know, that's what I would say there. Any flash is going to be fine. If you have a small budget, get an off-brand flash. Just know they're not going to last as long. Or a used flash. They're good to have. You can use it on your camera. Also, I should mention, I don't have one. But they do make a couple of things. You could get an off-camera shoe cord, they call it. It's like a coily cable. So you can take this, and you put the other end on the top of your camera. They're like 50 bucks or less, and you basically can hold the flash out like this to get better angles. You can also put it on a stand, theoretically, if it wasn't too far away. That's a good, inexpensive way to get it off your camera. You could also just buy another flash and use that, because oftentimes, like, this one can control other flashes, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So there's, there's many ways to get the small flashes off your camera. There's lots of speed light demos that we've done, so probably do another one at some point, too. So they're super useful. Unless you know that you need bigger flashes, and you just, if you're dabbling, I probably would start with this, okay? Whatever brand you buy, whether you buy the, the camera brand that you have, or you buy a Profoto one, or you buy a, you know, Adorama, what do they call them, Glow, something, yeah, Flashpoint, you know, whatever that we sell here. All that stuff is fine. Use it, master it, figure out, there'll be a time where you won't be able to do something, and that's when you need something else. And that's it, and you will hit that point. You know, we all do. Other questions? No, okay, really? Well, online. New grids, light modifiers, flashes, like the extra be like Snoot, Scrids, light modifiers, yes. Yes, good to have. I mean, I didn't go over modifiers because that's more 
technique. This is more of a technical class, as technical as I get. Um, yeah, you want to modify your flash. I mean, I think that probably goes without saying. The flash by itself is not the prettiest, especially this kind of flash, is not the prettiest thing in the world when it hits somebody. Um, you want to modify it. Whether you want to control the spill of it, you want to change the color of it, you want to make it larger, you're going to want to do something to it to affect the image in the way that you want the image to look, right? We put a big old box on this because we wanted to have nice, even, clean light for a portrait. If I wanted something more moody and dark, I would have used a different modifier or a snoot or whatever. I mean, I'm not a big snoot person, but I get a lot of questions about that. I always think of snoot, snoop doggy dog. Right? So I don't, and, yeah, this is, so snoop doggy. Maybe he has a line of photo equipment that's, anyways. Um, I don't know, snoots are snoots, I guess. They're, they're, they're interesting. A snoot, for people who don't know, is basically, I mean, it looks like a big nose, I guess that's what I call it a snoot, but it's basically like a tube that you can get a circle of light uh, on a spot. I, I don't think they're that popular. They seem to sell them a lot, but I don't know who's using them because uh, it's not really my thing. I don't know. It's, I mean, it's, it's very specific. Uh, I would much rather go with grids if you were going to buy something. Grids are going to give you control spill with kind of more, f um, more feathering, so they're usually more natural. So I would be more of a grid person than a snoot person, but if you like snoots, more power to you. Other questions? Yes? I see the technique is more and more not coming with the feathering on the, uh, on the lights now. Uh, that oh, is that, that just that coming now? Wow, okay, good, I'm glad. Well, for the number of years, yeah. It's recently the past, they're they emphasizing it more now. The well, feathering. Yeah, they're figuring it out. Right. Yeah, yeah, they're just, uh, yeah. So you're talking about the feathering being, a, <laughs> I love how that's a new thing. It's a new thing. So yeah, it's, so here's the thing. When people first, this is going away from the topic, but since we have a minute, I'll talk about it. I'm going to show you how to point your light, because I feel like I'm going to do this. It's such a random thing to do. But, all right, so when you look online and you look at old books or you look at people that don't know what they're doing, uh, they always take their flash and they go like this. They go, hey, I'm going to light him up, so I'm going to put my flash right there. This is, well, it's a little low. This is not how you want to put your flash, right? Because the center of the flash is hitting him and you're, you're wasting all kinds of light. You don't have light to use for other things. You typically want to do what's called feathering of the light. We rarely point a flash directly at somebody in a box because we want to be able to have as much light to play with as possible, right? I've seen people do this too for some bizarre reason. I have no idea why. Why do they do that, Dave? What, what's this when they do it? It's really high like this. Like, what's all that? Like, what, what, what's that? What, what's this? Like, don't, don't do that. Like, that's, that's weird, right? So. <laughs> You want to use your light, right? Light is a resource, right? We don't want to waste light. So this is wasting light because there's really that light's doing nothing up there, right? Now, I guess if I went like this, you know, I mean, that would make more sense, right? Because now where's all my light, right? Now, now I'm at least I'm hitting them with the light, right? And I have extra light over here I can use, right? You want to use the light. But first of all, pointing it directly at him is normally not, and if you ever see I point a light or somebody like Dave, we don't point the light right at people because it's wasting it. Feathering the light, meaning using the edge of it, is much more effective. Not only does it give you control, because now we're not losing all our light behind the person, but I have all this light over here for what? For a reflector, right? I can bounce the light back in, I can control it, I can use it. So that's why we feather light. Yeah, I don't know why. I, I guess if you're using small lights, if you're using snoots or like very specific lights, sometimes you point them directly at somebody because there's not a lot to feather. But in a box or an umbrella especially, you're going to want to feather your light, right? Spread it out. Get the light where you want it, right? Don't just point it right at the person. Okay, does that make sense? That was totally off topic, but relevant to the question that you asked, I guess, because apparently the kids now are feathering, which is cool, I guess. I don't know. I guess I was ahead of my time. <laughs> Yeah, they, you don't you, you point the light right at somebody. I, I guess because you look at diagrams, it looks like that's what they're doing, but no, don't do that. Okay, questions? Somebody is online right now telling me that I'm absolutely wrong. You should always point the light directly at it, and that's what makes us awesome. So, yes, I'm sure people will do that. Go for it if that's how you like to do it. But uh, somebody explained to me the over the head thing. I can't quite figure that one out. Um, or the flat thing is also weird to me, where the light is flat. Because, like, you want your light, especially if it's coming from above, to be tilted down because like where, where in the world, I guess it's first thing in the morning, right? Maybe the light would be like that. But you know, if you're actually lighting somebody for craft or style, like this doesn't, I guess it makes it more even. That's why people would do that. But you touch your light a little bit, get it up, but not over their head. 
Yeah. Don't, don't waste all that light. I have another question. Oh, boy. Now he has another question. Uh, this, uh, Mr. Off Topic. Yes, the go. Subject from the background. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the key lights might be affecting the mm -hmm. background. Yeah, that's not a question, though. That's a statement. See how he did that? <laughs> see, see what he did there? This, this is what he said for people online. So the subject from the background, obviously, the key light affects the background. Yes. <laughs> that's the question that you asked me. I'm just giving you a hard time. Yeah, obviously, the key light is going to affect the background. The further something is from the background, the darker the light will be, right? Exactly. That's the inverse square, blah, 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 you know, whatever. That's, we don't do math. Yeah. And obviously, don't point the light. Again, right? If I'm doing this, then less light's going to hit the background, right? Right? If you're ever on set with, oh, yeah. uh, on with me, you, I almost never point my lights directly. I'm always pointing them like this because, yeah, you want to control where it falls. Questions? No? OK, cool. Thanks, guys. I'm going to be back next week, actually. Two weeks in a row. Huh? So next week is going to be nuts. So hopefully you <laughs> at least got something from this one, because so next week we're setting up about a gazillion lights in here. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to like build up a set so that you can have three or four, I guess three. I think three is what I said. Completely different looks that you can interchange it just by switching the channels on your lights. So we're going to create three completely different looks that you can just switch back and forth you know, between them like that. So in fact, you can even snap your fingers. It works. Totally switches it. So thanks if you're watching online. If you don't know, guys, we stream these online. So watch that. I'm Daniel Norton, photographer. This is Brian. What's your? Do you have Brian, like a Brian Yeager? Brian Yeager. Check him out. Yeah. Dave Bluska. And uh, we'll see you next week, guys. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Ooh.